Hello everyone, is Fluffy here, also known as Stallion. The new dev blog for Dauntless Awakening has dropped, so let us not waste any more time. Of course, I will be talking about this dev blog in my podcast on Saturday as well, so stay tuned. What's coming to Dauntless Awakening? The updates are detailed further into the blog, but to start off here is the quick rundown that they gave us to begin with. Karkonos, our newest behemoth, is coming to Island's events on the new Umbral Hunting Grounds, Twilight's Domain. New weapons and progression. Unique weapons with their own legendary abilities and talents. Weapon swapping swap between weapons for a strategic elemental edge or to do epic swap combos, armor progression, and cells. Updater Moors will be the centerpiece of your builds using cells to lock in perks, new hunt pass, and canisters. The hunt pass is the core of the new season and includes free pulls from a new cosmetic distribution mechanic, canisters, new cosmetic sets, and bundles. The deep sea set and the god hand armor. Bundle will be making their debut. Streamlined, questline new and updated quests will introduce all of the new mechanics and make the game more accessible to new players. Improved loadouts. Swap all things cosmetic, including Slayer's appearance and crowns, via loadouts. Elemental status updates. There will now be Radiant and Umbral elemental statuses, and Frost's is getting a tweak Behemoth reworks. Many Behemoths are getting behavioral tweaks, with particularly notable changes to Ember Main and Valamir New Fauna. Three new fauna will be added, and fauna drops will now be crucial for crafting supplies, streamlined buffs. Buffs will be simplified to six core categories. Ramsgate updates, various tweaks are happening in Ramsgate. These are all some very interesting new features, especially the canisters, which were nowhere to be seen in the closed beta. Let us continue. Karkonos, formerly known by its codename Crudge, Dauntless is getting its first new behemoth in a hot minute, built proudly with input from our community. Karkonos will naturally drop the parts needed to build a new set of Karkonos armor. There will also be a rumor for a new Karkonos-inspired die. We will be able to encounter this monstrous new behemoth via island events in the new Umbral Hunting Grounds map, Twilight's Domain. Let's move on now to the new weapons and progression system. There will be seven weapons available through the early quests of the game, and they are as follows. The Silver Sword, the Living Branch, Skies of Ostia, Fury of the Mountain, Netherlights, Twin Suns, and Golden Claws. As stated by the devs, there will also be 11 more unique weapons available in exchange for a new currency called Weapon Tokens, which are obtained from Hunt Passes, free and paid, weekly challenges, or for purchase with Platinum. Those weapons are in order from left to right in the picture. They are as follows, the Anvil, Bane and Balm, Eternal Winter, Firestorm, the God Hand, the Hunger, Molten Edict, Oath Keepers, Reaper's Edge, Thunder Soul, and To and Fro. In addition, every weapon has a unique legendary ability, can be powered up to level 60, and has 25 unlockable talents, including boosts to special, active, and passive abilities. We're also introducing Etherite as an exciting, collectible XP boost to weapons. Oh, and one last thing. You will be able to equip both a weapon and sub-weapon, with both weapons gaining equal XP. You can swap between the weapons, either with a button click or through a badass weapon swap combo. Now let us discuss a new Reforge reward, which is another crown called the Crown of the Committed. This crown, unlike the previous one, will be awarded to those slayers with 10 reforges on each weapon category. So it is crucial that you get 10 reforges on each weapon class if you wish to obtain this magnificent crown. 
armor progression, and cells. As stated by the devs, armor will be critical to your builds as the main source of buffs and perks and will be upgradable to level 20. You'll be able to preview the perks that each armor piece can unlock in the new armor crafting screen. And once your armor has crossed the threshold, the perks will activate. Armor will be the only place to use cells, which now serve to support the perk system, helping you lock in perks. Note that once cells are attached to armor, they're locked in. Removing the cell or swapping in a different one will destroy the original cell. So you'll want to be strategic about which armor you attach them to. It will also be easier to hunt down particular cells through cores in patrol chests on certain areas, as well as in the trials and gauntlet stores. A new hunt pass. After what seemed like a long two years, we are finally receiving a new hunt pass. It will be filled with tons of new rewards, such as dull etherite, as well as the new weapon tokens, bounty tokens, patrol keys, cell cores, and free pulls from the new canisters, which we will see here shortly. The elite tier of the hunt pass immediately unlocks the new umbral repeaters, alluring moons, as seen here in the picture. More information about these repeaters will be given in a future div blog near the release of the update. The rest of the track contains Shining and Peerless Etherite, Bounty Tokens, Rams, Rare Cell Cores, Transmog Stones, Canister Pools, and more, culminating with the brand new Alluring Suns Repeaters Transmog. The Elite track also offers the benefits of the Slayer's Club, as the Slayer's Club will no longer be in the game. Also, the devs mention, in I quote, Upon completion, both tracks will pay out a prestige core with each new level, offering dull etherite, bounty tokens, patrol keys, uncommon and common cell cores, and rams, which means the elite track gets two prestige cores with each level. The hunt pass is designed to be the centerpiece of each season, and as such, the reward cash will be retired. With this update also comes a much clearer approach to hunt passes. There will be one hunt pass at a time, ending at the end of each season. With that said, the last thing we want is for anyone to miss out on rewards they could have earned. So any vault or event hunt passes you have already started or backlogged will automatically credit the full rewards at the start of this new season. Canisters. As introduced earlier, canisters are new to Dauntless as a way to offer cosmetics. There will be two types of canisters available during the Dauntless Awakening update drop. One featuring the brand new Deep Sea cosmetic set, the other containing classic Arxlayer cosmetics. Free pulls from these canisters will be available from the Hunt Pass, and additional pulls can be purchased with Platinum. New Cosmetics in addition to the Deep Sea Cosmetic Set, a new God Hand Armor Bundle will be added to the Platinum Store for purchase. Main Quest The main quest line has been better refined to allow newer players to find their way around much easier. Also, all unlocks are now tied to quest lines, meaning you will need to complete quests to unlock weapons and armor as they are no longer craftable. The Slayer's Path will also be used to unlock buffs and boosts. Returning Slayers will be prompted to complete these new quests to ensure that you have been properly introduced to all of the new mechanics. You'll still have your gear and upgrades, we just want you to know what's going on. The Master Quest line will also be removed for the time being, as it is closely tied to the Reforge system. So, if you're keen to get the Adamant Fist Monk armor set, Now's the time to complete that quest. Improved loadouts. All cosmetics and even your Slayer's appearance will now be able to be saved to loadouts, allowing you to experiment with drastically different builds and self-expressions with the click of a button. And yes, that does include crowns. Elemental statuses. Radiant and umbral elements 
will now be having elemental statuses. They are, as quote, radiant. If a behemoth does an unstable move, the effect explodes, dealing minimal damage but interrupting the behemoth. If the behemoth doesn't do such a move, the affect deals a small amount of damage as it ends. Umbral. An umbral cyst appears on a random part of the behemoth for 30 seconds. The cyst has 3,000 health and when hit, deals part damage in an AOE explosion. When destroyed, they explode, dealing umbral and heavy part damage in an AOE. In addition, the frost elemental effect will now freeze the behemoth for two seconds, instead of just slowing it down. Behemoth rework. Both Embermain and Valamir are getting updated moves to make their encounters more exciting, with quite a few other behemoths also getting behavioral updates. New Fauna. The new fauna, Chaoxes, Vespers, and Orchids, will be making their debut as a bigger challenge than you're used to from Fauna. In addition, Fauna Drops will now include new parts needed for supply crafting. Streamlined Buffs Buffs have been simplified to six core categories, Might, Critical, Speed, Vitality, Defense, and Endurance. Ramsgate Updates. The middleman will be removed for the time being, as well as cell crafting, to support the streamlined cells update. Granny Strega will also be taking over grenade crafting from Admiral Zai. Lastly, Kat has opened up her castle for us to explore in preparation for an upcoming arrival. Could this be the arrival of a new game mode? That summarizes this new dev blog. There were other things that were not spoken about in this blog, such as the legend behemoths or pets. However, the devs mentioned that they are still being worked on. Perhaps we will see more info on those topics in another future dev blog. For now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you are all now well informed about what is coming to Dauntless with this new update. I will also be going over this blog live on my podcast this Saturday, so stay tuned for a more in depth review. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so that you won't miss any of my videos.